We had a special day of basketball highlighted by Caitlin Clark's greatness. She destroyed LSU and route to um, Iowa securing spot in the final four. Let's react to this game, break down what Kate, what Caitlin was doing and just have, have some fun watching one of the best and most exciting basketball players on the planet cook. The, the Tigers game plan against her was questionable to be nice. Haley Van Lith, who is was should not have been her primary defender. She's five foot seven. Caitlin's six six foot six one, way quicker. And they were going under screens. Like, why why on earth would you go under one of the best shooters? Like, can you imagine if a team went under Steph Curry? This was a very confusing game plan that they unfortunately kind of stuck with for a decent amount. And Caitlin getting downhill. We see the burst. We see her shielding, pushing off, not really pushing off, you know, creating, carving out space with strength and floats it over Angel Reese on, on the way to the bucket. She is very, very hard to stop. And her passing in this game was phenomenal. She is amazing hitting cutters. If defenses lose their assignment, even for a second, Caitlin will flick the ball with her great vision and timing and patience and all that, she punishes mistakes like few other players. And once again, the very questionable, confusing coverage here, as we can we can see right here, that LSU is going under. Why are you going under Caitlin Clark? It doesn't make any sense. Um, like, why? Obviously, she kind of flew backwards, but Caitlin is, is going to make you pay for that. And, and, and she did all day. It was very confusing coaching. From that perspective, the transition passing was awesome today. Caitlin pushing up the floor. We're going to see plenty more of, of that transition work. And she is so strong. Oh, my goodness. Look at Caitlin fight her way through contact through this whole drive. Her, like, off-arm work is so, so good. She might hit her in the face a little bit there. But, you know, hand fighting happens on drives. Really good job being physical, swiping away maintaining a straight path while fighting through contact. And it's just a really impressive bucket. Once again, transition game. And you can't leave Caitlin wide open on a, like the side of the court for a transition three. Like, what exactly are you doing? And this was just nasty. I mean, it really wasn't Haley Van List's day. And to be fair, she didn't really have any help. But, man, Caitlin, immediate change of direction, right? Plans her foot to the right and then goes back to the left with the behind the back. Totally freezes the defender. And because, you know, it's early offense, the defense isn't set. LSU just doesn't have the bodies back to contest. And we can only see the end of this play. But again, from what we can, Caitlin getting downhill. She generates so many easy looks. And check the off foot, off hand finish, right hand, ideally to throw the timing off of the rim protector and float it up in there. She is a masterful, masterful finisher. And I love this play before the half. This is just Caitlin orchestrating at her own pace. She initially gets penetration to the middle here, but she sees the big kind of right, right in her space. Haley Van Lith is trailing, so she pulls it back out. Quick stop, start, burst, change direction. Easy lay down to her teammate for the open jumper there. The stop, start, the patience, the athleticism, the feel, all of it is on display on a play like that. And it's really, really difficult to stop Caitlin. And oh my God, this third quarter, she went absolutely nuts. I just don't know what the thought process is between or behind giving Caitlin any space. If you're going to defend her one-on-one, you have to press up. You can't just let Caitlin, Caitlin sit back and splash threes however she wants. Beautiful hit ahead and transition right here. I do wish these highlights were like showed a little more of the beginning, but whew, quick hit ahead. Beautiful bucket right there. And this was the story of the game, right? Caitlin owning LSU's single coverage, mostly against Haley Van Lith. Nasty work. She fights over the screen well initially, but sometimes when you're playing a player like Caitlin Clark, there's just nothing you can do. Sidestep from out near the logo. Rainbow three, leaning to her left. And I love the footwork here where she like hard plants with the right hop step all the way to the left to generate a ton of space and she cashes that three over van lith again in transition she was deadly and she was really feeling it in this third quarter there's really nothing you can do when again i love how 
Caitlin sets up her footwork. It's choppy. She's not necessarily giving anything away. And then hard plant one or quick one, two in this case into a ridiculously deep three. She, I don't really know what to say about her sometimes. I, <laughs> she's one of those players that makes me lose my words and my word, this is getting absurd. There just wasn't enough urgency from LSU in getting out to her threes. Like, she does a great job here backing out when, when Angel digs hard. And Angel honestly does a pretty good job getting her hands up. But this is too much space for Caitlin Clark. That is a wide open three for Caitlin Clark. And there has to be maybe more aggressive help from well, this one pass away. This defender definitely needs to fight over harder and probably attach um, but again, when Caitlin Clark can change direction, stop on a dime, explode backwards like she does, sometimes there's not really anything you can do. And she's that kind of player. Another dime in transition here floats it over the defense. She is a crazy passer, like absolutely nuts. And one more in the exact same spot. And again, we see like just weak screen defense. I really think against someone like Caitlin, you have to be more aggressive with your second defender because if Haley Van Lith loses on the screen, which she unfortunately did quite a bit in this game, I want I think you want the drop big at the level to blitz to force Caitlin to pass to drive anything like because she is going to hit those shots. And I love the fork again. We see choppy, choppy, choppy until she disguises that one two and hits the three and there's really nothing you can do at that point like when you have a shooter like her even if you defend fairly well like it it, it has to be better it, it can't be good it has to be perfect you know what i mean like to, to guard caitlin it cannot be good it has to be perfect and again Haley van lith fights over but doesn't stay attached and <laughs> like what how this is this this is just crazy. I mean, she's she's hitting everything from deep. Um, phenomenal shooting performance. She 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 was on one. She was on a crazy heater. Um, that's no doubt. I love this play late in the game when Iowa was kind of pulling away, where they the LSU is denying really hard. They are they finally switched Flauje onto Kalen, which they should have been doing the whole game. Um. But long pass and a kind of like give and go. Use the off-ball movement to get her a head start. And this time, as Angel steps up in the mid-range, she can throw a little pocket bounce pass. There were a couple more passes that didn't end up lead to didn't end up being assist that definitely should be in here. But yeah, Kate Caitlin was so special. <clears throat> Not just an elite shooter, but an elite floor general. The defense was good. She was scoring from all over the floor, getting to the paint and Beyond LSU's questionable game plan, there really is just not much you can do when a player like Caitlin, a player of her caliber, is having this kind of night. And I cannot wait to see her against Paige Beckers because that game is going to be ridiculous. Uh, give me a like, subscribe, comment, all of that if you would. Uh, really helps the channel. And I hope you have a nice night or day.